You're listening to episode one of the Library TechCast, Koa and IT. The Library TechCast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Learn more at techpodcast.com. Let's kick off, Let's kick off number two, Library TechCast. Um, okay. I'm Jeff Sable, uh, a reference and instruction librarian, head of library technology at Concordia University, Irvine. Um, my co-host, Riley, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi, uh, my name is Riley Childs. I am um, from Charlotte, Charlotte, North Carolina. I am the student librarian at Charlotte United Christian Academy. Um, I do a lot with technology and management of IT information technology, but my main background and my main interest really is in library technologies. Um, but yeah, that, that's really who I am. Uh, so we do have a fantastic show planned for you today. Um, it is going to have it is we are going to start off with discussing uh, last week we talked about um, the Los Angeles School District and their move to uh, I, using iPads in the classroom. And so now we're just going to touch on the um, local school district here in Charlotte. CMS is actually, um, and my brother came home today and he said, uh, I used a Chromebook today in math class, which I thought was really cool because I had really never seen those deployed in school districts before. Um, and they actually do as well deploy iPads. But the price that is quoted was much lower than like the six hundred dollars that was quoted for um, iPads in the uh, Los Angeles school district, mainly because they figured out um, that there is an app, there is a setting on the iPad called uh, called what you call it? Uh, it's like kiosk mode. But yeah. And what um, does that do? So that's what really does kiosk mode do. Um, I actually have my phone with me, so let me just show you. So basically, oh, I don't have it turned on. Uh, it basically it prevents you from leaving an app. So basically, what happens is, is that I can. Yeah. So it prevents you from leaving an app? It does. It Tell us more. Leave... Tell us more. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, take your time. Okay. So now let's say. So I have my phone here, and I don't think you can see that very well. But um, I'm going to launch. Let's just say, I'm trying to find something that isn't like, let's say I'm going to launch Podio, or if yeah, they're using yeah. that or something. Hang on. Screen brightness. I wish I had one of those things where you could hook up your phone to like a, um, uh, is that, yeah, oh, that's right, much to better. The screen. Yeah, that's yeah. much better. So you see that there? Yeah, so yeah, I yeah. just tap. Oops. I just tap one, two, three, and it pulls up something that says guided access, and I would hit start, and it basically says guided access enabled, and I can hit the home button, and I have to double tap. What is it? What is it saying? It, I double, I triple tap, and it brings up a passcode, so I can't leave that without putting in a passcode. And my understanding is someone should, if you know anyone in the Charlotte School District, um, that my understanding of that is, is that they're also using it in conjunction with Find My iPhone, which is a free oh, service right. from Apple in addition to that. Um, the only cost I really could think would be associated with this program would be a purchase of the, of the apps that they're using. Right, but generally, right. I think they're limited. They're using um, web-based apps and web-based applications. Right. There was um, actually um, something on the listserv that people were asking how to um, keep track of iPads. I'm not sure if it was on um, Code for Lib or not. Do you see that that post? Might have been on Calix. 
I did not. I, I haven't really, I haven't had a chance to really sit down. I've been really busy this week. Oh, no, uh, it, was it, a, it was a couple weeks ago. Oh, it was? Oh yeah. oh, yeah, I think I remember seeing that. I think um, some guy recommended Cisco Meraki. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's that's the... Um... Some guy recommended uh, Cisco Meraki. And that, why is that reversed? Um, let me fix that. Hanging out toolbox worked. I'm so happy. <laughs> Let's see. Mirror my own video. That's better. Okay, so Cisco Meraki. Right, right. Um, and this is actually their access point, which they sent. Which um, I know, I know they sent it to me for free, but it was just because I attended a webinar. Um, I've been playing around with it. It's pretty good. But their, where they really shine, actually, is their um, is their free Meraki Systems Manager, which is fantastic. Um, if you go to Meraki.com, you can sign up. It takes, like, I think I had a, had my family's phone set up on it in, like, five minutes. I mean, it literally only takes five minutes. It's simple to do. And, and tell, us, tell us a little about what, about how, what you can do with it. Um, it allows you to push down apps and track track the iPad um, and erase the iPad, which is actually a uh, very interesting feature for enterprises. Um, it allows you to so now it doesn't allow you to like lock it, but most because it's it's running within the limitations of what Apple provides. So there isn't it's not like any special thing that it's hacking the phone or anything or iPad. What it actually is, is um, you could use this in conjunction with, once again, Find My iPhone for locking the device. But the beauty of Cisco Meraki is that it's all right there. And once again, one of the neat tricks that their access points can do is they can prevent devices that don't have the client profile for the iPhones installed. If they don't have the client profile on the iPhone, it will detect that, and it will say you can't connect until you install the client profile. Very cool. Very it cool. Very, it works very well, and it also supports Android. Yeah. Which you can't is, go wrong there. You, yeah, you cannot. Big fan of Android. Just got the iPhone because it was 99 cents. <laughs> I mean, I, I just didn't have any money for an Android phone. Um, right, right, right. But, yeah, I mean... Yeah, the the Moto X is on my wish list for sure. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean that's just that's just my two cents, I guess, on that situation there. Um, but yeah. So, on. Yeah. So any any other current event news uh, items we want to comment on, or have you have you um, read lately? I guess there is there is Coacon coming up. There you is. Give there is Coacon. It's going to be in Nevada. Um, and it's actually free. So is... if you're in the Nevada area or you're interested in COA, you can fly down. Um, the rooms are super cheap. The conference is 100% free. And it sounds like they have some interesting stuff planned. Um, but basically, um, I'm trying to remember the name of the company. Hang on one second. There was a company that called me. Um, asking, actually, they called the school. It was transferred to my desk, and um, so what they are, they are giving book covers for free. Like, I mean, the covers that you put on books. And when right, I asked right. if there was a catch, and she was like, "There isn't any obligation." Um, <laughs> There's always there, a catch, though. But there, there was no catch. I mean, I'm not. I'm talking to a sales rep next week. Uh, but those are the two key words there, sales rep. Um, yeah, yeah. But if if this works out for you, you got to give me uh, give me the hookup as well, you know. I mean, they were like, we're just trying to get the word out, but I mean, it sounds like a like a fantastic thing because right now we don't have any book covers. We don't have that nice plastic wrapping on a name for books. So. And, and the, those are expensive for sure. Yeah, yeah, those are incredible. Yeah, I mean, I was I was looking at quoting some prices, and I mean, it would cost like a dollar to wrap every per book. And I mean that's ridiculous when you have eight thousand books in, in the library, which Absolutely. is what we projected to have. Um, but yeah, that's yeah. So really... one, one... 
Oh, I was gonna. I was just gonna sh shout out the date. So October 16th through the 22nd is um, the Tire Co uh 2013 in Reno, Nevada. So like Riley was saying, cheap rooms um, should be a great time. I may may make it out. Um, I'm still trying to uh, ascertain, but I may come out for that Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, just to um, to really see what it's all about. Okay. And next up. We are going to take a look at, unfortunately, Cali or Quali or uh, I always butcher the name. But um, so that was OL. that was the third ILS open source ILS we um, previewed last week. And it seems like it would it's it's really well developed and it looks like it works really well. But I do not feel com I do not want to really explain it and go through it because. Their roadmap shows that there isn't going to be a release to market before um, quarter two of 2014, I believe. So I really don't want to get everyone's hopes up and make you wait um, for that. But I mean, it looks really, it looks really, really good. And um, the website, if the website will be at the bottom of the screen, if you're watching the, if you're watching the recorded version. And. So I am going to, uh, what was it? I'm gonna just so that I can. So and so we we may revisit that sometime in the future. Um, you know, just since the actual production um, download is is not going to be available for, for quite some time, we'll we'll go ahead and put that on the back burner. Um, and, and you know, this week we're gonna we are gonna focus on Koa. I know Riley, you installed it, and you're sort of gonna give so. a. I'm, so how how was the installation? Easy. The installation was super easy, and actually not. I really um. If you go to our website, and um, I really I really didn't want to put an ad in the corner, but. Uh, web hosting costs are very, very expensive, um, especially when you're hosting video content because that's mega bandwidth and audio content because that's also mega bandwidth. Um, but yeah, if you go to our website uh, and and either click click on under the spot under the uh, support us tab and click on DigitalOcean or in our sidebar click on the DigitalOcean ad. Um, one of the uh, that then you click on then you can uh, do two things: sign up for an account, and then also if you go to their community and search for Koa, I wrote a fantastic uh, installation tutorial, and this is probably one of the easiest ILSs I have seen yet that will let you that it's the easiest to install. I mean, just going going from personal experience I mean I probably I probably had it up and running in about a couple hours um, but I am actually trying I'm about to spin up the Koa server because like I said web hosting costs costs are yeah, very, so very that's expensive. that's an easy way to support the show and also sort of see the the ease in which uh, Koa can be deployed maybe yeah. in your library if you're looking for an open source um, option or um, you know, you're sick of paying somebody for, for a service that you don't feel you're um, really utilizing or you feel you can get the same with an open, sur open source. You want to support the project and move it forward. A great way is to deploy it in your library. Um, and, and Riley, so, so you want to you talk us through how, how sort of like step-by-step step you, uh, you deployed it or are you just going to give an overall review? Um, I, I just wanted to kind of – okay, let me uh, pull up my – because I just wanted to – I just want to say, um, it by far. I tried installing Evergreen, and mm -hmm. I got held up. I mean, it was. I'm sure it's great, and I'm sure it's a fantastic piece of software. Well, what, 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 what do you want to talk about a little bit more in detail? What you got hung up on, or? It was the first step with the Open SRF. Okay. That was really confusing. And if someone would like to send me an email, um, ltc at rileychilds.net, with details explaining to me what I did wrong, but um, I could not get past the first step. Huh. 
Yeah, I, I haven't. I haven't tried as as of yet. I was busy playing with D Space, which we'll probably talk about sometime in the future as well. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I would like to actually consider talking about maybe D Space in the next episode. Cool. Um, yeah. So yes. Yeah, we may we may have guests coming on. Um, we're trying to set up um, one of the major players in Koa, and we might get. Um, we might do an after Coacon um, interview with him, sort of a wrap up. Um, and all, all I think I'm on the list serve. If you follow Code for Lib, they said most of the um, sessions will be taped, so you can look for the video online for those. And I think that's just at um, Coa.com, I'm sure, or sorry, Coa.org or Coa-Community.org. Yeah, Coa-Community.org. Um, that's that's and... the official Koa website. Yeah. To this will be available in the show notes. Cool. Yeah, so so let's so let's hear your uh, review of Koa. Likes, dislikes, um, strengths. Once again, it was literally eight steps. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, but yeah. So my really my first impressions of Koa was that it was a very very clean interface and a very very simple to use implementation of an iOS um, and uh, cool and um, there are actually if you want to take a look at some of them if you go go to koa communitycom forward slash demos oh dot org my bad my bad that would not yeah. <laughs> it seems like they were late getting a domain, um, but if you go, well, I think and they, it forked, right? It forked to like lib or lib lime, lib lime coa. Oh yeah, I think I think that's what it forked from because I noticed that if you go to coa.org, it's like lib lime. But um, in particular, I'm looking at the. I am actually looking at the op, um, the the staff client right now, and I logged in. It took about it took a second to log in, and then what I'm it's the about the simplest thing in the whole world, and I am going to give the screen share one more time. Yes, there we go. Um, and as you can see, it's very very straight. It's, oh. So this is zero customization, right, at this point? Oh, uh, yeah, this is basically zero customization. I don't know why it's blinking like that. Um, yeah, but basically it's zero customization, and that's just what it looks like. Um, it, didn't, it didn't get hung up. But, yeah, and it's – and I could not find it, but I do know that they have a kiosk, um, like logouts, checkout solution – I just haven't had really enough time to go in and find it, um, but. So you're talking like a self-service type uh, yeah, kiosk. Yeah, because uh, I know those are starting to get very, very popular. Right, right. Yeah. Everything's uh, becoming automated. Oh, wait, here it is. It's the. It just poked, or beeped. Um, yeah, but. Um, I would have to say that there's even an offline circulation program, so if, for example, your library um, lost internet, you'd still be able to check out books. Really? Uh, That's pretty awesome. Yeah. I know Evergreen has something like that, but and it works pretty well. Um, but Koa's thing, it was, a, it was actually developed by someone who needed it, so you can imagine that it's going to be rather full-featured and work pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and the one thing that I will have to say that they that they got pretty that they did pretty well was the acquisitions mod module. I mean, I can easily see you mess. It, that's very easy to mess up. And I was talking to someone actually at the public library down here, and they said um, one of the reasons they didn't go with an open source um, ILS was because at the time the acquisition module sucked. They did. They didn't right, work. Right. They yeah, they were yeah. very ineffective. Um, so that I mean, we're talking. We're talking too. Also, you got to keep in mind that 2008 was pretty much the real, like, rollout of a production model of an ILS. So this is relatively yeah. uh, a new 
application and, and a completely new um, ILS that they're that they're rolling out that's completely open source. So I mean, it's yeah. still you know if you figure how long most ILSs have been around, this is you know the baby of the bunch, regardless if it's yeah. open source or or production or you know actual company making it. Because I know really. Really, yeah, you're right. 2008 really was like the year of the open ILS. That's when they really became adopted. But for a lot of large libraries, 2008 was much too late because they were already in 2003 or 2000, they were already getting locked into contracts with um, Dynex or Siri, Siri Dynex and all, yeah. the, all these other um, proprietary technologies that were great but the problem was they were insanely expensive. Um, insanely. I mean, you, yeah. you know, the most expensive ILS a year, I mean, it would blow your mind how much I think some of these schools are spending on it. But, I mean, like you said, they're locked in, their workflows, their um, knowledge base, everything is based around these single ILSs, and, you know, they really and, find it hard to leave. And the other thing that I really uh, – the other thing that I know is that the school district here – they have an ILS site license uh, for um, for, <laughs> for Siri Dynex, no, for a, a Horizons so Dynex solution for every single school. And wow. I don't remember how many schools there are, but there are at least 50 schools in the district. I'm sure that um, that salesman is is living living well. <laughs> uh, yeah, <laughs> I know. I mean, it's, that's crazy. It's like they're not using the features of the software. Fully, I mean, they're not even utilizing right. the uh, the OPAC very effectively. Um, there isn't a font, so you can't log on and do holds. You can't all the features that it was made to do. You're not. They're not using. They're using to the check. They're using the checkout. That is it. Checkout cataloging and acquisitions. That is it. right. And you think if if they you know if they really evaluated it, that money could go into books. It could go into hiring someone to run their ILS. You know, locally. Pumping yeah. money back into you know the local economy, giving someone a job, you know, and I mean, I think it's just entrenched these I, these you know commercial ILSs have you know they've sunk in their roots into most people that have adopted them, and one of the most daunting, I think, um, tasks that anybody can can really undertake, or at least in their own mind, is, is converting from one ILS to another. You know, so it's once they pick one, they're they just stick with it. And I mean, because I, I like, I always hate migrations. And I mean, that's just my personal opinion. Well, I think I think that's a universal yeah, uh, that, that, dislike. Yeah, that's, that's a universal thing. Like, at my school, we're about to, we're part of our long-term plan is we're going to begin to migrate to two separate networks. And as you can imagine, <laughs> like, so there's going to be a staff network and there's going to be a student network. And then for all all you out there that speak um, lightweight directory access protocol, that we're going to have two we're going to have a tree and then we're going to have two separate domains within that tree. And I'm thinking we're going to ha we're going to have to do something because <laughs> this is not going to work as beautifully as they think it is. Um, but, what, what kind of operation is, is the IT department over there? Is it four or five guys, a guy the or The IT department, we have an outsourced uh, – um, it's through – actually, I'm not going to say it because I really don't want to plug them. As awesome as they are <laughs> – Just say, just say I, they're outsourced. I, they're, yeah, they're outsourced. As awesome as the, uh, as the IT firm we use is, I just really don't want to bring any specific vendors into this. Right, um, right. For, except for people that I know are fantastic. Um which they, uh, yeah, it's irrelevant. Um, but yeah, we outsourced it, and then they have me and the vice principal. And like I said, I'm buddies with the IT guy. I mean, we're, yeah. Um, so I have root access, I have administrative access, and um, whenever there's a computer issue, there's a buzz, and it's, Riley, please buzz the front office. <laughs> so they actually call you out of class, right? Uh, yeah, they've called me out of class on numerous occasions. And, um, yeah, it's – but I figured out a workflow, so I'm using a fog deployment server now, and that makes everything so much easier because, oh, there's a problem with your computer? Hmm, 
reinstall Windows. Click, click, reboot their computer. Windows is reinstalled. Um, so it, so I'm not really having to deal as much with the IT side anymore because I can do that all from my iPhone now. Um, but yeah, so though that is really what I'm. That's really what is going on in that situation. You really have to keep in mind is um, when you're paying. Uh, IT is really expensive. Oh, and that's, absolutely. That's simply a fact. I mean, there isn't any way around that. Um, and any way that you can make sure that your con your uh, your entire budget is not going into your IT department, is not going into software, it's going into things that is going to make your library fantastic. Make sh open source is a great option for that because right, it, right. it keeps significant costs down significantly. So, so what um, what kind of server did you deploy Koa on? Um, I actually deployed it on a cloud server. Okay. Uh, once again, I deployed it on DigitalOcean uh, because that's just like that's the way I roll. Um, we're actually <laughs> our website is actually is. hosted on DigitalOcean. Um, Too. Yeah. Yeah. Great company. Yeah, yeah they're fantastic. Um, uh, I really, I really hate. I really feel so weird um, doing that. I really don't want to do that. But it's insane how much this is. Because I have, I if you looked at my thing, which I am actually not going to let anyone see my my DigitalOcean control panel, because I have like almost I have five servers to do this because the my Apache kept crashing. Even on a shared host, Apache kept crashing. Really. And they got angry at me, so I had to move to DigitalOcean. <laughs> Oh, so the actual uh, place you rented the server space from got mad at you? Well, because it was a shared host. It was like right, right, right. or something. They didn't mm -hmm. necessarily get mad at me. It's just kind of like, yeah. <laughs> it's move? time to move on, right? Yeah, because and I was and I was paying insane amount for extra bandwidth. But um, we're just kind of chatting now. Uh, but yeah, so if y'all have, if you want to guess or you would like to converse with us, spend a half hour just sharing your opinion on all this stuff, um, shoot us an email, lpc at rileychilds.net. That's lpc at r-i-l-e-y-c-h-i-l-d-s dot net. Or you can... Um, hit us up on Twitter. Hit us uh, up on Twitter. Uh, if you would like us to have a Facebook, let us know. I really just... I don't use Facebook. I'm out on so. Facebook, yeah. yeah I'm Facebook. on Twitter. Yeah, so like Riley said, we're always looking for guests. If you have an interesting open source project you want to come in on and talk about, if you have something you want to promote, we're always um, happy to have guests. As you can see, it's pretty informal, uh, more like a conversation. Yeah. Uh, you know, and you know, I hope we're imparting some, some sort of uh, useful information for anybody who's, you know, A, thinking about uh, – Going the open source route, if, you know, maybe maybe a library director would might want to come on and sort of give their point of view of of fears or dislikes of open source. Um, you know, one thing we're not willing to have is any IT department or IT worker come in and tell us <laughs> their opinions about the or dislike of open source. Um, but like well, I like Riley said last show, make sure you get your IT department on board. If you're if you're sort of thinking about this for your library or just you know interested uh, in general, I would be actually I would be somewhat interested in having someone from the IT department <laughs> and explain their point of view of why they don't like the open source. Absolutely, yeah. That that would be that would because that would kind of I just I just would like to know. Well, that would that would be that. information you know that librarians can use. You know, if you're dealing with your IT department and they're telling you open source is not the way to go. Mm -hmm. You know, if you hear it straight from some of the concerns that an IT department has, maybe maybe that'll sort of help you address that in your own library. So, we're gonna wrap uh, it up here. We are going to wrap it up. I think we're a little bit over time. I think we're closer to like 35 minutes instead of the 30. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. like well, like Riley said, follow us on Twitter, um, Library Techcast. Uh, check out our website. Um, yeah. Any parting words, Riley? Uh, just have a fantastic week, and I am Riley Childs.
Jeff Sable. We'll see you uh, uh, next week. Same time, same place. You just listened to an episode of the Library Techcast. Join us next week on Friday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time when we will be discussing the merits of the DSpace respiratory system. Our website is ltc.rileychilds.net. You can now find us on Stitcher Radio. You can download the app from your favorite app store or marketplace. See you on Friday. I hope you have a fantastic week.